<laughs> that one drilled it, I'd say. <laughs> hey, it's springtime. It's right in that in-between spawn. They're coming, they're getting ready to come. The weather's got them rocking and rolling. I can hear it. You hear that in the background? Maybe a little cricket. Could be the sound of a roll of thunder in there too. I can't tell, but a bladed jig. We'll teach you some secrets on this one. Cricket bite, little cricket on the fall, little cricket, little cricket. Come up here, little cricket. He'll grow up and be a big cricket eater one of these days. Now look here. He's not even hooked in the mouth. He came up and slapped it on the fall. I lifted it up and let it fall. Little thunder cricket. Not in the forecast, even though we got cloudy skies, no thunder in the forecast. We're gonna have a little thunder here shortly. That started with number one there. This is a bass catching machine, a vibrating jig. Profile, it's not flashy. It's got all of that vibration. I beef it up with a bigger trailer than most do. A little bit different kind of trailer is one I really like. And in the pre-spawn period and in this just before they really kick in the spawn. And there's not a better way to cover water and catch big bass with this vibrating jig. And a couple little secrets we'll go over here today about it and what I tend to do with it. May help you a little bit, keep that bait down there where you can catch you a great big one. And we'll get all on to that here once they get to biting the old thunder cricket. one drilled it, I'd say. That's the thing about a bladed jig. It makes them so mad that a lot of times I think they just hit it with their mouth closed. That one absolutely spanked it. There we go. That wasn't the one that bumped it. He just bumped that one. That's not the one that ate it. Coming right at you there. Oh, little old fat bass right there for sure. Nice fish. He's got that old cricket wearing it just right. That's not the one that hit it on the cast before. This one came up from behind it and got it. Nice little pre-spawn fish. Look at that little belly on her. She's ready to go. Thick fish right there. Get out of here, dear. Old cricket. That one gobbled it up. You really see an advantage here. You're gonna see when I land this little bass, we get him in the boat. This is what I like about my cricket bait. Come on up here. This one got it way back there. Snuck up behind it and got it. But here's the key to the Strike King Thunder Cricket. Look how long a shank hook that is. Good gap, but it comes way back here. Eliminates the need for any kind of trailer hook because when the fish come behind it and get it, they close on it, you've got the fish. That great big hook really helps. You know, over time, I've, I've figured how, how a bladed jig works the best for me. Just the bait itself has a tendency to want to come up high in the water column. You get excited, you wind it a little bit fast, you use a relatively high gear ratio reel, the bait gets up high in the water column. If the fish are high in the water column, that's great. I was missing a lot of fish. I was losing a lot of fish because they just come up and roll at it and not get it. So I decided for my system was to go to a heavier bladed jig. This is a 5 8 ounce jig. A slower gear ratioed reel. This reel only brings in 28 inches of line at one time. And instead of having that constant retrieve, I tend to lift and let it fall to keep it down in the lower part of the water column. And I started noticing my quality started getting better. Uh, I still get a lot of fish that 
hit the bait with their mouth closed. They're so mad at the darn thing. But I tend to fish it at about a 45 with a little lift and pull, get it close to the bottom, and then bring it on home with just a nice slow rolled retrieve. Pop it through a piece of grass or whatever you need to keep that blade moving. But that heavier bait keeps Mark's bait down deeper. I've got to keep it deep because I get excited. It's like everybody else does. I reel the bait real fast and it gets up high in the water column and I get it away from the fish. Heavier bait, slower gear ratio uh, are the two things. And then the rod that I like, I like a medium action rod. This kind of goes back a little bit like the crankbait situation where I've got my hands trained, they know what that bait's doing, and I want a slower action rod for two reasons. One, it allows that fish to get the bait, then I feel it, and two, the parabolic bend in this rod. Um, this is a bladed series, or bladed jig rod uh, from Strike King. It, it allows me to fight that fish with no worries. I, I keep a good deep bend in the rod, good C bend in the rod, and, and I catch most of the fish I hook this way. So it's a real good um, one-two punch as to getting the bite and landing it. But it took me a while to figure this out. It took me a while. All those fish came up off the bottom. Watch them, they'll go to the bottom when this thing comes right by them. Look at them, see them fall? Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. It's not bass. Sure look like it, but it's not bass. That one, I saw that one come up, get it missed it once and came up and got it. That's a good one. That's a real good fish right there. That's a nice bass right there. That's a really nice bass. Stay down. I saw that fish flash on it and then it, I just let it fall and it just went doink, just like a jig bite. Come here, big dog. Got you. Got you, got you, got you. That old extra long hook reached back there and got that fish good. That's what I love about the cricket. It gets way back there. Ah, and that fish was hooked fairly well. How about that? That's a nice bass. Oh, fatty, look at her. She's probably spawning, trying to spawn with this weather change. That is a good one. Thunder Cricket, where have you been all my life? You know, I like to be a little different sometimes. I act like a fool sometimes, according to my wife. My kids think I'm goofy, bad dad jokes. But I discovered, as far as a trailer on a bladed jig, one of my favorites and one of my go-tos is a game hog, striking game hog. Those paddles on it and the curly tails. Discovered this out in California on the Delta, practicing for a tournament. Oh God, I got around a bunch of big bluegill. I thought, you know, what kind of trailer do I have that'll match up like a bluegill? And that one really does. It's a, the bulk of the flanges and the arms and the little tails and things create plenty of action, but it's the bulk and it's the size and the shape. So when I'm looking for fish this time of year, bluegill are the number one predators of a bass bed. So I really try to make that thing look like a bluegill. And I think we've done real well with that one right there. That one drilled it. Little guy drilled it right here by the boat. Just saw the white belly flash up there. Trying to get rid of that old thing out of his mouth, isn't he? Come up here, Junior. Just that old long hook just reached back there and brought him in the boat with us. You know, blade shape on the on the jig is a lot of it too. The cricket has a little bit smaller blade, so it has a higher pitched vibration where it's more of a, you know, something more like a number three Colorado instead of a number four or number five. And as water temperatures warm, I think that higher pitch gets me more bites um, with, with a cricket. The shape of the blade's a little more rounded and I can move it a hint faster in that warmer water. Um, but that blade's moving at a much faster pace because of the shape of the blade. 
But again, it's all about that big gigantic hook in the back of this thing. If one breathes on it, you've got him nine times out of 10. There's one. See the bend in this big rod, it keeps, it keeps that hook right in place. A good deep bend. This is a medium action rod in the Signature Series line, and it is perfect for this. That's a fresh one that just got up there shallow. Look how white that fish is. That one just got there. White, white, white little old fish. That's, a, that's another added bonus about a bladed jig. Is I fished through this area and had two or three of them just stroke it and not get the bait. I come back through at a different angle, get in the proximity and get bit just like that one. Where are you going? Look at that one there pulling. That's a nice one. That one's upset. I missed two through here. And look, these were two good ones just by coming back through. Good, nice fish. How about that? Right through the top of the nose. I can lead him around like a puppy dog for a while. There we go. How about that? Look at that. that old long hook right through the top of the nose, just like that. That's another good fish. A real nice bass. I think he's got it on top of the head. I don't even know if he's got it in the mouth or not. He's kind of doing whatever he wants to do. Get up here. Yep, that's another one of those that ran into it. Just ran into it on the outside and got hooked on it. You know, that slower action rod, this is a graphite rod. It is a medium action rod. It's seven foot three inches in length. It's in the signature series, the bladed jig rod. It allows me to make long casts. That one I never even set the hook. I just started reeling. Very tippy for great action. I can skip the bladed jig around docks. I can skip it under trees. But when you hook that fish, it allows you some of that parabolic bend so that you're not going to lose that fish. That fish wasn't even hooked inside the mouth. This rod helped me land that fish. Mm-hmm. Nice one. Real nice one. I mean, pulling like a train now. Pulling like a train. There you go. That's why. He's a good one. You think that fish is not ready to spawn? It looks like a football, only green. That good one. She just came up behind it and just, the blade quit wiggling. Now that's a tank right there. How about that? It's raining, but I don't hear any thunder. Except what's in my hand. Look at that one. Goodness gracious. That is every bit in the five pound category. Four pound length but five pound around. What a nice, nice man. Winding the bait, it's brrrr, all of a sudden it just quits. She came up behind it. That's what that good hook's for. When they come up behind it and push it, it gets far enough in the back of their head that they get hooked and caught. That's a darn good one right there. You know, with, with this, generally around a lot of cover and big fish, so big line is necessary. This is 17 pound of Brazex, extra tough, extra stout line and a custom light reel in a 7.5 to 1 that actually just pulls in 28 inches of line per revolution. That helps me keep that bait down. I want to keep it down most of the time. Helps me catch more. There, one just rattled it right there. Catch, I catch more fish keeping this bait down in the water column than up in the water column like a spinnerbait. You just missed it, Daniel. 
peanut. Little peanut trying to trying to get my cricket. They are biting a cricket right now. Look at that funky looking little dude. Looks like a damn lizard bass. Tell me. You little fella. Fatty. Catch another one real quick. Watch this. There he is. Oh, he came off. There we go. Not a good one, but I tell you, what's happened here in the last little bit, we've got this rain moving in, barometric has gone down, and the fish have really moved up shallow. You can see this one, He's, see how white he is? He just got up here, and that is what has gone on. We're gonna have to call it quits because of the rain, but I tell you what, if you like this vlog, give it a like, give it a share, get into the gear giveaway, get some crickets, some lose, and some Strike King stuff, man, we appreciate you. We're gonna get out of here before we get too wet. Thunder Cricket. <laughs>